You're listening to the Millennials Choice Show, Canada's most trusted podcast on all things real estate, finance, and entrepreneurship. Here's your host, Matthew Ablican. What's going on, everybody? Matthew Ablican here from the Millennials Choice Show, where we talk about all things real estate, finance, money, entrepreneurship. And today we have a special episode. I have a special guest, Danny Avocan. What's going here. on, guys? What's going on, brother? Literally, brother from the same mother. Straight up. And Yo, this is a sick setup you have, honestly. Thanks, brother. Thanks. And today we're talking about real estate and the current market we're in and where we think it's going to go and some of the struggles people are facing. And, and let's just see where this conversation goes. How does that sound? Let's get into it, man. I'm All excited. Right. All right, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. You're, you know, for those of you listening to this, uh, first of all, we appreciate it, and I just want to let you know, the more you listen to stuff like this and you repeat it, the more you can absorb and learn, and then you want to help change your family's lives and your friends' lives. So scientists have proven when you share what you've learned with other people, you end up learning even more and you retain even more of that information. So please be sure to subscribe to this podcast, to share it with your family and friends. We appreciate your support. And let's get right into it, Danny. So what are we seeing right now? Like the market is nuts. It's burning, man. It's still really hot. I don't care what anyone has to say. Like we're seeing it on the front lines. Um, some people are like, oh yeah, the market's dying down. I personally don't see it dying down um, just based off of uh, a lot of the resale that we're doing on the day to day. Honestly, it's insane. Yeah. It's just insane. Yeah. So we do, we do resale real estate, which is stuff that's already existing that you can see touch, feel, drive by, go inside and check it out. But we also do a lot of pre-construction and I agree with you. So the stuff that we're helping our clients with, we're on the selling side and we're on the buying side. And and buyers are having an extreme amount of difficulty right now. There's not enough properties in the market. Yeah. And the ones that are available are selling significantly over asking price. Now, um, you know, with the selling side, it's great to be a seller right now. 100 percent the seller's market right now they got the ball in their court for sure yeah so what are you finding when you're on the when you're hitting the pavements when i'm hitting the pavements oh man it's been busy recently just non-stop showings um i'm having to i think show about probably 40 to 50 properties or homes uh before we're able to actually get an accepted offer wow um i could confidently say like uh since the beginning of this year every client that we've helped there hasn't been an offer we've submitted where it's just been between us and the seller. It's always been a multiple offer scenario, right. which obviously just means that there's other agents also putting in offers for their clients, right? Which is uh, a big difference. It's a big game changer, right? Um, when it comes to, you know, putting an offer on the table and negotiating. So, so that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. So um, you said 40 to 50 homes. So usually how many homes would you in a normal market where, you know, the demand and supply are relatively uh, close? How many homes would you typically show a prospective buyer that's a good question if you're seeing about maybe three to four homes uh showing i would say probably about 20 would be a solid number like that's you've gone out you've seen a lot of different places um but yeah now it's i i feel like it's almost doubled wow yeah when you're going out and and uh those scenarios so so folks for those of you listening like we're licensed the millennials choice group of companies we're licensed in all areas real estate mortgages life insurance and I'm licensed in all those areas myself. I focus more on operations here and Danny handles the day to day with clients. So um, this is all good stuff. This is so good for you right now. And anytime there's this kind of market where you're, you know, faced with low supply and high demand, these same principles apply. So the multiple offer scenario, how does that work? Like you, you find a property hits the market today. How do you know they want multiple offers? And then how does that work? Is it transparent? Like, just walk us through that. Yeah, great question. So um, the listing agent, which is just the real estate agent that's helping the sellers sell their property, uh, usually mentions that they're not accepting any offers until a specific specific date that they've set out, uh, usually a week out from when they've listed it. And uh, some agents decide to say, uh, we're holding back offers, which means we're not accepting any offers before this date. Uh, and so you have to wait. Right. Uh, other agents actually go the other route as well and say, we're holding what's called an offer date. So don't submit any offers until that date. But at the same time, they're saying that their sellers are very open to reviewing any very strong offers before that date. So so we just did a deal like that right now. We, we listed a condo for sale. 
and we had a few showings early on. We did speak with our sellers and the game plan was to have multiple offers. And what ended up happening was we were open to other offers in the meantime. And what ended up happening was the one of the showings, one of the buyers that went in to look at it, their agent called us and said, we want to bring you an offer. And, and we ended up notifying all the other agents that, hey, there, there's, a, there's an offer. The agent ended up bringing an offer and we ended up notifying everybody. We ended up selling that condo for a record price record in, price. in yeah. one day. I couldn't believe that, honestly. That was yeah. amazing. I'm so glad for, for our clients. And, and at the same time, quick closing, no conditions, yep. firm deal, which means when someone says firm deal, no conditions, it means um, the buyer or the seller cannot back out of the deal. Once the offer is accepted by both parties, they have to honor that. Um, quick closing, 30-day closing, and way over asking, like way over asking. We we were we were even surprised at that number. Yeah, I and was. Surprised. So were the clients. One hundred percent. I think we were all surprised. Um, one point on that for the for making an offer before the offer date. Um, this is just some tips, you know, for the buyers that are listening to this or potential buyers, people that want to get into the market. Because I get asked this question a lot by people that we're helping, and they say. Um, can we make a, you know, what's called a preemptive offer, which means like we're talking about an offer before that special date. Right. Right. And the most important thing that I uh, advise buyers in this market is uh, you need to really, really come in with a strong offer. Otherwise, the real estate agent that's helping the sellers is just most likely going to advise them and say, you know, this offer is not strong at all. Uh, let's just we might as well wait to see what other agents bring any offers in. Sense. So one piece of advice I want to give to buyers is if you're going to, you know, or if you're considering going to the market and putting in a preemptive offer, which means you don't want to get involved with any multiple offer scenarios, is you need to go in with a very strong offer. Yeah. Um, and and I, sorry, yeah. but to build on that, I started in real estate and then I added all these services to the company, but I have a lot of experience in real estate and we do this every day. Like when, when I'm asking you questions, it's good for our audience to, to learn, um, but I go through this every single day. And when I'm the listing agent, you know that you know this. I am ultra aggressive for my clients. Yep. You have to um, in this particular example, I'm the same way when I have buyer clients. Um, but in this example, where the market is a seller's market, I am ultra aggressive. So when agents don't come correct with that offer, yeah, <laughs> come correct. They gotta come correct. We, we we have to present it with to our clients where we have a. So by the way, when someone says we have 15 offers on a property or 20, they have to not be lying like if they're lying about that they could get into a lot of trouble um, but we have to present it to our clients but if it's a crappy offer listen we're not there to be yes and no men and women in our industry we're there to advise our clients you know nobody goes to a doctor's office and says doctor what's wrong with me and the doctor says oh you have a i don't know what something they can have heart disease, heart disease whatever yeah, something and the guy goes well no i don't i know what i have and they walk out no no they, they go there because they want the advice from the doctor. From the expert. And then yeah. they want the solution. Same thing here. When we're, if we're going to go advise our clients in this market, and this is to your point, that offer better be great. That's why we sold that condo in one day and we didn't wait until the offer deadline, which or offer presentation date in this case, because it was a solid offer. Like I, we, there was, in our opinion, it wasn't going to get any better. And the clients actually knew that too. Yeah. And we were even surprised it was this good. Um, so you need to come put your best foot forward. That's what we tell all of our buyers, put your best foot forward. You do not have the ball in your court. It's not that type of market. One day it'll be that it'll be a market where you have the ball in your court, Yeah. but it is not that type of market and you need to put your best foot forward, which means putting the best offer that you can do that you can afford that, that makes sense for you. Of course, um, in this particular situation. Yeah. And just to add, to build on that too. Um, I understand when people want to get a deal. I love getting good deals too, but you have to also understand um, what position you're in, right? So there's so many different factors that play a role in this, especially when it comes to the actual professional that you hire. Um, some real estate agents have called us, you know, um, even for like things like leases, right? And they've called me and they've said, hey, my client wants to put an offer on this place and we should really be getting somewhere around like $4,500 a place for this place monthly, right. um, this house in Toronto. And, um, Long story short, I tell the agent, listen, you know, what's your client looking to do? Because I don't want to waste time. And they, they give me a low ball number. I'm like, listen. How much did they give you? What's a low ball? They were, they were saying like 4000 for that. And I said, listen, he's not going to do that. 
Just don't even waste your time. Yeah, rent's you know? a little bit different. When you're knocking off 500 bucks, that's more than 10%. That's a big, yeah, that's a big difference worth. for that's, the that's rent. Yeah. And I was explaining, I'm like, listen, like you got to you gotta educate your client, or in that case, which is the, the person that wanted to move in, the tenant. Right. Um, but this goes, well, like the same for buyers, people that are buying. Uh, it's the professional's job to educate them and say, listen, um, this is what's happening. Here's what's sold in the area or in a condo building in the building. Uh, here's what you need to expect that they're expecting. And yeah, that's, I find there's a big gap sometimes. Like sometimes agents are just really not, you know, on top of it, but they're that's just why paper I, pushers. Yeah. Honestly, there's, um, so many people and, and you know me, like I'm, a, I'm a strong advocate for this. Real estate is what I love to do. I chose this career, right? I started off investing and then I got my license and then I've, I've built what we're building. And so many agents should not have their license. <laughs> It's, it's plain and simple. Yeah. They're bringing everybody else down. That's true. All right. Yeah. Um, they make me look extremely good um, yeah. and, and make you look extremely good, but they shouldn't be licensed. But I, I have agents all the time calling me, asking me for help. And that's okay. We're here to help. But when you're coming in because your client's telling you to come in like this and you're not managing, you said it best, their expectation, that's a problem. Huge. That's a problem because then you're wasting everybody's time. Exactly. Including your own. So we, you have to manage your client's expectation. And that's not a bad thing. That's just takes, it, all it takes is a conversation. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, you know, you want to offer 4,000 bucks a month. All the comparables here show that this rents for 4,500 or more. There's no reason for you to come in at 4,000. Like you're, you're, you're probably going to insult the, the seller or the landlord. I know some people say, don't worry about insulting the, the seller or the landlord well there's been times where you could make deals if like i i've experienced uh where, where other realtors come in and are super rude super obnoxious they're rude to the assistant it makes a huge difference and it makes a huge difference Definitely. it's like you know what yeah. it, it speaks to your credibility 100 i mean listen if you're a jerk you're gonna probably attract clients that are that way exactly and and we don't want those types of deals to go sour for our clients so it matters who's coming in Who's buying the deal? There's times where we've gotten deals for our clients because of our mortgage division that was able to pre-approve our clients properly, which I think everybody should be pre-approved before you start looking for a property or Please. make an offer. Like, come on guys, it's 2021. Everything is changing before our eyes. Like you're, you gotta get pre-approved the right way. That's the Go first see step. a broker, okay? Go to a broker who can shop around the deal, talk to different banks for you. Um, but we've gotten deals because we've pre pre-approved our clients. And when we went into the deal to even in a multiple offer situation, we've explained to the agent, this is who we are. This is the companies we own and our clients. We've, we've pre-approved them. You just did a deal like that. The last we, two deals we you did, just is, did that. That was a big factor. That was a big a factor. In Why? Multiple offers, yeah. Why? Because as a seller, picture this, if you're a buyer right now, put your shoe, put yourself in the seller's shoes. Somebody's coming in to, buy the property. There's multiple people interested. Prices are skyrocketing. There are concerns that someone might not be able to get the mortgage for that money. Anything could happen. Anything can change. You want to make sure that even if you're taking a little bit less money, a little bit less money compared to another offer, but you're getting, uh, getting that offer from somebody who's credible, who's going to close, they have their financing in place already. That makes a big difference and we call Huge. that peace of mind 100 percent. it happened on another deal as well where i was speaking with the agent and i was explaining how you know uh the clients have been already pre-approved and we've taken care of that and he was like oh yeah but everyone says that everyone says their clients are pre-approved i'm like no no but you don't you're not understanding i'm like i personally like have pre-approved them they're good you don't have to worry about that and he's like, oh, wow, like you did it? I'm like, yeah, I'm the mortgage broker See? on the actual file. He's like, wow, that actually makes a big difference. There you go. I'm like, perfect. And we actually got them the Com deal. Compared to the, oh, everybody says this. And yeah. he's right. He's, he is right. He's, he's right. right. He was very right. Yeah, because when we're, we're the selling agent, we're the listing agent, we're representing the sellers. Mm -hmm. I get agents all the time. They tell me all they're kinds of, they're pre-approved. Yeah. They're uh, millionaires. <laughs> they, you know, they're, they're going to pay for this in gold. Like, I don't know, like all kinds of stuff. <laughs> And then they flop or they, yeah. they go somewhere. And it, and you have to take what agents tell you with a grain of salt sometimes. Um, but you need to make sure that who you're dealing with is a credible person. I just did a deal. I'll give you an example. 
I did a land deal. So whoever is interested in buying land, it's something we do. Um, where there was two offers, mine and another agent's. And the seller called me up and said, the offers are very close. They said they're very close. Yeah. You're actually, uh, you, you came in a little bit less, but he said, I know you. And I said, how do you know me? Because I didn't know this person. He said, well, I get your emails from your mortgage division or from something else, your pre-construction project. That's awesome. I said, yeah, that's, that's me. He's like, well, you know what? Because we know who you are and we know your position in the market, we're going to give you the deal because I'm going to explain to my seller who you are and they'll feel confident that you're going to close the deal. That's amazing. And I ended up getting the deal. That's amazing. There's, you, you, there's no words for that. There's no uh, value you can put on that. You yeah. will win. You will yeah. get deals. Well, that's why, our simply clients, of that. that's why our clients don't question us about our commissions and stuff. We, we know how to bring value to our clients. We make our clients money or we show them opportunities they otherwise would not have seen. It's all about who you know. 100%. Right. I agree with you. And yeah, there's just so many different examples where that's happened, where the agents called me once I've submitted the offer and they said, listen, we have, and it's happened where they're like, we have an offer that's better than yours. Yeah. We have an offer that's higher price than yours, but we really like how you're in control of their financing because we know you have skin in the game. So you're going to want to get them the mortgage. And, and to those real estate yeah. agents that are listening to this right now, and, and you know, I encourage you to look at other ways to become valuable to your client. Yeah. We have like. I saw a stat the other day. I think the it's either TREB, the Toronto Real Estate Board, which is the largest board in, in the world of real estate agents. Um, I think we're at like 90,000 members. Sounds about right. like, I was thinking 80. Yeah, 90. yeah, ni I, th yeah. I heard 93 or something okay. like that. It was crazy, you know? Like, like, that's how many agents there are. And the interesting stat is that maybe less than like 2,500 of them produce the majority of the business. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's... Like most agents are not really out here working and building a solid business. So no. as a client now, as a consumer, you need to know that it's uh, the days of, oh, my great aunt is a real estate agent. And I have to go with her. <laughs> like, what the heck does that have to do with you and your situation? No, for sure. Find someone who's going to help you and achieve your goals. So if that's, mm. hey, I need to buy something resale in this marketplace and the market is really tough right now. It's a seller's market. I need to get a dog. I need to get a bulldog 100%. in my corner. I need to get a guy or a woman who knows what they're doing and they're going to go in there and they're going to just like negotiate this and, and structure the deal in a certain way and have that rapport. That's why we invest so much into our brand. Millennials choice. Yeah. Right. We want that to be everywhere. We want people to know us. The more people know us, the better it is, the better opportunities open up, not only for us, for our clients. 100%. It's funny that you said that because I thought about something that happened. I don't even know if I told you this, but it was with one of our clients. I was meeting with them. They were looking for an investment property in Barrie. And um, we got to this uh, property, the first showing, like first. And I didn't, here's the thing. I didn't know um, what car they drove. It was the first time I was ever meeting them in person. Right. And uh, we got to the place and I parked up and I never park in the driveway because I like to leave that for the clients for convenience. Oh, that's and sweet. Um, I'm standing there and it was, uh, it was, there was snow on the floor, I remember. And, uh, Long story short, a car pulls up and I'm waving and stuff. And like this older lady gets out and I'm like, oh, this isn't them. It was another realtor. And I'm, she's like, oh, can I show the home? You know, I'm, we'll be quick. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Go in. Here's the twist. Here's what's funny. The clients came after. We're outside. That other agent comes out and it was their cousin. No way. <laughs> it was their cousin. And they saw them? And she, saw, she saw them, them and they saw her. Oh. And it was so awkward. Oh, you didn't tell me about that. <laughs> I forgot about this. Yeah, yeah. And so you literally just uh, like, I want, I, got a spark Tell me the in. names afterwards. I will. And, um, <laughs> All fair, because we it, believe in confidentiality. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was one of those situations where, you know, obviously I played it cool and whatnot. And <laughs> and um, the lady was like, oh, like, what are you doing and stuff? And they were super cool about it too, uh, like our clients. And they're like, oh, oh yeah, gosh. we're just looking for something, you know. We've known these guys for like, you know, a very long time, which they do. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things and where if you've known us a long time, we've made you a lot, a lot of, of money. money. <laughs> Hit the ching sound. Cha -ching. Cha -ching. <laughs> and so they, they played it cool. And long story short, um, they had a family member or a cousin or I think it was a cousin, something like that, that was an agent, but they didn't choose to work with them just because they were their family. They actually wanted to work with a team that, you know, I don't want to say knew what they were doing, but has a lot of value. Going back to what yeah, you're saying, yeah, which yeah. is a really big difference. And uh, I can confidently say we made those guys a lot of money uh, by getting them in at that time. I know time. who they are. Yeah. I know who they are. Very happy for them. So yeah. they're listening to this. Good yeah. job, guys. Good job, guys.
But yeah, man, it's so important. It's so important having the right team. Yeah. I, I saw an article uh, earlier today from the Globe and Mail. It was talking about millennial. It literally the title, you know what? Hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to, I took a screenshot because I actually want to reach out to, to the editor. And um, it said millennials priced out of home ownership. Okay. <laughs> this is from, uh, sorry, not the Globe and Mail. Sorry, Globe and Mail. Global News. Global News. Okay. Global News is pretty big. And I'm yeah. like, millennials are not priced out of the market. Who the heck said that? It's just more doom and gloom for the millennial the news, generation. Yeah, but. Because millennials are trending. We're the largest demographic right now. We're taking over the workforce and we're actually part of the problem right now with the rising real estate market because um, there's a lot of millennials getting married, uh, buying a home. They start, they're starting a family. They're, they're well into their careers now. Yeah. And you put, you put something out there, you publish something out there like that, and it's not based on stats. We're helping people every single day. Yesterday, I spoke with um, three millennials, all of whom are buying properties in this market for the first time. They were all referred, all three of them were referred to me by word of mouth because we don't do any advertising. It's all word of mouth, our business. And we're, we're starting to pre-approve them. And I can confidently say they all have options, not option, options to buy. That's amazing. Okay. That's just yesterday. That's just, that's just one day. Yeah. Today I'm meeting up with another guy and, and the same thing. We're, we're, we're actually signing a deal. Millennials are not outpriced, okay? They're, they they can afford it. There's a way to go about it. Don't jump into your multi-million dollar home, forever home right away. If you can't afford it, you have to change or manage your expectations a little bit in some 100%. cases. But yeah. so what? Get into the market. I was speaking to a guy a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, and great guy, and, and, I, and we're helping him out as well, actually. Actually, I spoke with him about a week ago, three days later. This is a guy who said, I've been saving for 10 years. I cannot outpace or, or outsave inflation. Inflation just keeps going up and up and up. Prices keep going up and up and up. I cannot save faster than that. He calls me on the Thursday and it was either Saturday or Sunday. He signed papers to buy a unit. That's amazing. All right. Like no one's outpriced. You just have to change your expectation and get in for those people that want to wait until the market crashes and you've been waiting since 2010 keep waiting keep waiting and let's see what happens you cannot time the market and chances are when the market does make adjustments and come down you're not going to be able to time is that the lowest that it's going to go and then most likely you're going to say i'm just going to wait you're going to feel discouraged 100 percent. and i've seen it like firsthand sorry just to you know cut in oh you're good um you were really i don't want to say upsets me but i just feel bad is when people reach out and they're like, yeah, like I'm looking to buy, you know, a townhome, let's say in the GTA for $500,000. Good luck. And I'm like, let me know when you find bro, it. Like broski, like you're four or five years late, you know, like the price, those prices are not, they don't exist anymore in the GTA at least. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things where you, you give them some education, some knowledge on how, what you think you should do from the expert, you know, get into the market, just get into the market. Just, that's the key thing. Get in, right. Build that equity. But, when you're trying to explain, you know, what's what's available right now for our demographic condos, right? More affordable than townhomes, uh, just as a temporary solution to get in. Um, a lot of them, you know, don't like it. And it's one of those things. I think there's that there's that knowledge gap. I don't know. Knowledge gap. I want to call it yeah. where they feel like they've been told stuff by people. Uh, like their parents. <laughs> the parents. Oh, don't pay the maintenance fees. As yeah. if you don't have maintenance fees on your house. You have to mow your lawn. You have to shovel. You're always uh, doing shovel. <laughs> you have to yeah, shovel, shovel the, the snow. snow. I was gonna say shovel the sand. <laughs> shovel, the <laughs> uh, shovel the snow. Um, you know the roof goes bad. You got to pay you for that. Replace Some, it. Like there's maintenance all the time. And that's guys. what that's what people. There's yeah. a big knowledge gap. There's they don't they're not understanding. Knowledge. But there and it's are 2021. I know, but here's the thing though. Though for those other millennials that are understanding and they're willing to they're take your advice yeah. and yeah. literally say, you know what, what this person's telling me makes sense. Yeah. Um, and they do their own due diligence. Yeah. Then they take action and they actually get in and they succeed. So January 20, I don't even know that you probably know it's, it's this applies to you actually. It's mm -hmm. your story. I'm just gonna reveal it. Do you mind? Go for it. January 28th or 29th of 2020. Yeah. Just before COVID. Yeah, yeah. We were on the way back from Niagara Falls. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, you wanted to buy a condo. Yeah. You had the idea to buy a condo. 
And I, I kind of pushed you a little bit into one particular opportunity. 100% you did. That you never were thinking about. No. It wasn't on your radar. And I explained it to you. I broke it down to you. You were fully aware of, of what things mean, but the particular opportunity was new, maybe. And um, you guys ended up making a move on it. And how has now, about a year and a, a, year and a half later, not even, how has that benefited you? It was honestly one of the best decisions that like we've made. And it just allowed us to have more options now in the future because we got yeah. in at that time. And honestly, like you were saying, like kind of, I never really was thinking that was, it was possible to do yeah. what we did. Um, so what are you we, buying me? Yeah, we, <laughs> we'll get you something nice. <laughs> I promise. All right. And it's one of those things where you really don't know until someone really like explains it to you and breaks it down. And uh, you have to have the, I want to say the mindset of, you know, anything is possible. Don't, if you anything limit yourself, possible, yeah. it closes off opportunities. So yeah. when you're explaining it to me, you're like, why don't you guys do this? I'm like, wow, that's actually a pretty good idea. We never really thought about it doing it that way. Yeah. You know? And and how much did you have to, up until this point, how much have you given the, the builder? 10% deposit. So you bought it for like around 450. Yeah. So you've given 45K yeah. into the deal. Uh, this is last January, 2020. Yeah. It, more like actually you yeah actually you think, signed the deal in february i think it was like early february yeah late we january. talked about it late january and then yeah. you signed for it probably february 1st around there um 2020 so 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 for those of you who say oh you bought a condo when you were 19 10 years ago times were different first of all everything was exactly the same in fact i had a i had a very uh tough deposit structure at that time but i negotiated a payment plan but everything's the same nothing's changed with respects to that Prices have gone up, but Prices nothing else, up, yeah. but nothing has, the fundamentals haven't changed. So you got into the marketplace with 45K, right? Uh, you bought something for around 450. Yeah. And it's worth today how much? In I your guess, because I've been working on this. I'm going to, I'm going to say if you're right or wrong. Okay. I would say our unit clean 550. Oh, buddy. Minimum. That's conservative. Yeah. Conservative. I would list your unit for like 580, 590 right now. That's insane. So you've put in 45K. You haven't closed the deal. Because you bought it brand new, pre-construction. You didn't need a mortgage no. at the time because you only get a mortgage when the property is built and it's it's yours. That You become the owner. That's when you, you get a mortgage if you need one. And you only put in 45K. But the value has appreciated, let's say, 120 grand. That's above the 45K. Absolutely. Like So you've made a return of like 300%. Yeah. So when you guys talk about crypto and these kinds of things that you have zero control over and stocks zero. and all that you want to be a yo-yo in the stock market you want elon musk to send out a tweet and then destroy <laughs> take away half of the, yeah. the the wealth that you know crypto created okay this is 300 percent <clears throat> returns real and and although it's unrealized i know my investment stuff it's unrealized gains right it will be realized it will be realized. And then Danny can, you can sell your condo and take that out. And so what? You have to pay tax. Which investment don't you have to pay tax in, right? Or you can keep it, put a renter in there and still take out the equity and the appreciation up to a point from the banks exactly. and reinvest that money or do whatever you want with that money. Um, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. But had you not done that, the 45k that you had which you didn't even have probably in one shot there. you we made payments that's yep. the other thing you don't need to have all the money up front but had you tried to say you know what i'm gonna wait and i'm gonna save 10 percent. good luck today you wouldn't have bought it because that same be unit to. is now worth 590 yeah 10 percent is fifty nine thousand. you would have to come up with another fourteen thousand. meanwhile you're still trying to save the 45 Exactly. And you wouldn't have been able to get into that opportunity if it wasn't pre-construction. Yeah. Millennials aren't priced out of the market. Not at all. There's still ways. Did you, uh, just as an aside, because, you know, this is, this is the, the, the best show, in my opinion, for all these things, and we're going to give it to you straight. Did you have any um, conversations with your future wife when this was going on about, you know, mindsets and, and that this was a good idea for those listening that they have a partner that they would want to, you know, maybe try to convince the partner or explain to the partner. Can you yeah. speak to that a little 100%. bit? 100%. I, we did. We definitely had a conversation about it because we need to make sure we're on the same page, right? Yeah. Um, I find if you're not on the same page with your partner or your, your SO, your significant other, um, a lot of things can go wrong, right? Because you have different expectations. Um, you have a different uh, goal map, you know, in terms of what you're expecting. 
And uh, yeah, we had that conversation and we said, you know what, if we have to, let's say in this example, uh, move there for a year, and this is in Barrie, guys, it's about 40 minutes north of Vaughn. Um, if we have to do that just to get into the market, right. that's something we're willing to do. We need to both be okay with it. Um, that includes a drive and whatnot, whatever it entails. Um, so it's one of those things I strongly recommend. If you're looking to get into real estate, you definitely have to have um, that conversation and be on the same page with, with each other because um, there's a lot of different moving factors, a lot of moving parts, different factors that play a role. And um, it's only going to be um, tougher if you're not on the same page. 100%. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And I've had those same conversations uh, with, with my wife. And it's the same thing. We have to be on the same page. And, and when you're investing or getting into this sort of thing with a partner, yeah. it's so important. You guys have to be on the same page about stuff. Absolutely. So important. Um, what do we want to leave our, our listeners with right now? Yeah, good question. So for me, I would just say if you're, if you're a young person or a millennial, whatever the age is, you don't have to be young. If you're someone that wants to get into the market, um, there is a way to get in. You just need to talk to the right people. That's the main thing, honestly. Um, just like when you're looking to, uh, you know, speak to a doctor, like you're saying in your example, you want to go to the expert. You don't want to go to your parents to ask you about, you know, this is hurting me here or whatever. Go to the expert, go to the hospital, right. uh, talk to the right people. So if you talk to the right people, they'll give you the right guidance. Yeah. Uh, and that way it'll kind of open up your mind to be able to actually go ahead and uh, make the right decisions and take action. Because if you don't take action, if you're just waiting, I feel like it's a cop out when people say, I'm trying to wait for the market to crash. You're scared. I think you're, you're scared. scared. Honestly, like, you're scared. I'm, I'm saying this with love. Like, I think you're scared, yeah. but you got to make sure you overcome that fear and That's be it. like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to get in. I'm going to do what I got to do and uh, make it happen. Regardless yeah. if I um, don't have help or have help. If you have help, that's great. Use it 100%. Why wouldn't you? Yep. Um, but if you don't have help, team up with somebody yep. do it do it as an investment you know you, there's so much there's a million ways to do it so i i yeah. bought my first condo when i was 19 it was yep. pre-construction zero help from my parents both my parents are immigrants from the middle east they met here got married here yep. um and zero help zero and i had no idea i wasn't even licensed as a real estate agent i went in there i negotiated a deposit payment plan from and guess how i learned there were no courses we weren't doing stuff like this. There's no information. The industry withheld and continues to withhold a lot of the information, okay? That's how they feel they're valuable. We don't feel that way. My background's in teaching. I'm going to teach. I'm going to give you all the information, and I want you to make a conscious choice, an educated choice. Yep. So I went in there. I made the deal happen, and they needed a $60,000 deposit. I did not even have 15000 I had uh, 10000 was saved. And I had 5,000 from, from my student loan that I did not have to pay back at that time. And I said, you know what? I'm going to use this as a part of the first 5%, the 15 grand, and I'm going to figure out the rest. I'm getting licensed as a realtor. I'm going to work my butt off and I'm going to put the money in there. But everything that we do for our clients now, I had zero idea about. I didn't know to cap development charges. I didn't know commissions on the deal, like what they were. I didn't know how to cap utility hookups. I didn't know anything when I went to buy my deal. I didn't know that you had 10 days to show your lawyer the paperwork. <laughs> I didn't do that because otherwise I would know all these things. For sure. Um, and I still did it. I still did it and it worked out. I learned a lot of valuable lessons, but I got into the market. When I graduated school, I already had the money from that first investment to pay back my student loans in full. And there's proof of that in the system. I have that letter, okay? The point is, you are not priced out of the market and it's never too early or too late. Yeah. You just need to know and find something that works for you. And we've built a team here at Millennials Choice where you can talk about the finances, you can talk about the real estate, you can talk about estate planning, you could even invest in the stock market using a life insurance product that protects your investment, okay? That's there, crazy. There are so many opportunities here but you need to consult with the right people. So if you want to find us, you can contact my, you can find me and connect with me on social media, just at Matthew Abaken, Matthew with two T's, don't get it twisted. <laughs> and Danny, where, where can they find you? Yeah, Instagram, you know, Danny Abaken, same thing, Facebook. And you want to connect with, with us, we have the Millennials Choice channel on YouTube where we get into a lot of these topics in more detail. We've got 
the millennials choice group of companies on social media. Find us, connect with us, and come say hi. We have a new office, a new facility in yeah. Vaughn, and we're really excited about that. Come say hi. Come drop off. Uh, drop by our office and say hello to us. We, we would Reach love out. that. Yeah. Reach, Reach out. out anyway. We, it's, it's always love. We always want to help people, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. And, and we appreciate all of you listeners. And for those of you sharing the podcast, we really appreciate your support. Continue to support us. We're going to continue making great content for you. And this is the Millennials Choice Show. And we're out.